All right, this is Terry coming back at you again. We're going to where the captured slaves actually took their last bath. This is the uh, path to where they actually went. So you see a lot of us are getting ready to go down through this path here. And this is the road that they took to go do the last bath before they were taken away on the slave ships. So we're heading down to the river. This is the path that they had to take with uh, shackles on their feet and shackles around their necks and going through this passage here. It says, welcome to the Ancestral River Park. So this is the Ancestral River where they actually took the last bath before leaving Africa. Uh, basically, we'll be going through the ancestral path. We'll be going through the ancestral path to the Slave River. Now, you realize that most of uh, our sisters have their shoes picking up. Uh, because they see this particular grounds as a sacrifice for them, whenever our diaspora and visit, they love to go through this particular path with their shoes off. Uh, because they believe that it's the same path that our ancestors used. So for them to get a narration right and say the story better, they try to go through those experiences in order to tell their story better. But in here, it's not binding on any one of you uh, to take your shoes off. When you want to do so, you can do it. But if not, you can go with your shoes on. Also, it's basically a spiritual journey that we are, we are going through. So this is where we uh, alert each and every one of us to just, to just remain quiet and reflect. Those of us who have our ancestors, also not with us today, we also use that opportunity to thank them for our, their roles in our lives. So whilst going through this path, it should be very, very, very solemn. We pray, we reflect, before we get to the river, and we go through some three or four rituals before we call it a day. So I'll be leading, and we all go to the river. So when we get to the river, those of us who have good voices, maybe we'll see. So let's just make uh, the shot uh, So I'll be leading in the Okay, so now we're on our journey here. Gotta oh, wow. watch where you're going in here too. Of 
Alicia. Uh -huh. You have your shoe off. Oh. Okay. This is the road to the Ancestral River where the last bath was taken. Some people have chosen to take their shoes off while walking this trail and some have chosen to keep their shoes on because you can still feel the spirit of this historical walk to the uh, Slave River where the last bath was taken. We're heading on our way here. Keep in mind, at that time they had shackles on their feet, shackles around their necks, and they were taking this route to the last bath, the river. Before they would be scattered throughout the four corners of the earth as the Bible teaches. Alrighty my brother. <laughs> Okay, see the sign there says welcome to the Slave River. You guys can see that. This is quite amazing here and kind of an eerie feeling here really. But the energy is very high around here. Almost like they know what we're doing. Okay. Staying on the route. Still on the route. First bath of return. <laughs> Last bath. <laughs> okay, let's get closer so we can hear what's going on here. <laughs> Abu, Amen. Abu, Amen. Uh, so you are welcome to the Slave River, uh, literally known as the Nongko Isio. Uh, this is the same river that our forebears took their last back uh, before being taken to the Kekul dungeon to await the slave ship. Now, Ascent Manso uh, was uh, seen as the biggest slave market during the trip. Uh, many historians have made documentations to Asin Manso. We have our very own Akosia Aduma Pebi in a book entitled The Indigenous Slavery in Ghana from the 16th century to the 19th century. Our very professor J.E. Akwanda also said the same in his book The Trans-Atlantic Slave Trade, Landmark, Legacies and, and Expectations. We do have one British historian in the person of W.E. Ward in his book entitled The Short History of Ghana. All these historians uh, made the claim that indeed Ascent Manso was the biggest slave market during the trip. 
Now two markets play the most important role. We have the Salaga market, which was at the northern part of the, of, of the country, and Asen Manso, which is strategically positioned to the Cape Coast dungeon, because it was 35 miles away to the Cape Coast dungeon. So cuttings that were taken from the upper borders of Ghana, like some parts of Burkina Faso, some parts of Ivory Coast, and in the northern sector, those that were picked were made to work in chains and shuttles, barefooted and half naked, to ascend Manso in the air, which was 300 miles by foot. Mm. During that journey, because our forebears were marching through the forest best of the country, majority of our brothers and sisters were exposed to many dangers. Some of us were beaten by snakes, others were attacked by wild animals, others suffered punishments and cruelty from the slave raiders. According to our history, a majority of our brothers and sisters did not make the trip, so a lot of them died along, along the way. So when they landed here in Asen Manso, this was the place that they were fed fat, they were fed fat, so that at least we gained a little flesh on us in order to get a good market price for us. This was where our ages were determined by using a device called the Speculum Oris. Uh, this device is put into our mouth, open our mouth, count our teeth, thereby forecasting our ages. Broken bottles was what was used in shaving our brothers and sisters. Mm. So when you come in here, after the shave, you were meant to take your last bath in the non consume. But this river that you see over here are two separate rivers, they are not the same river. From the right, we have Amma Emisa. Amma Emisa is getting its source from the Pura River. With the Amma Emisa, it goes through town, village, community, and end up at the sea at Cape Coast. From the left, we have the non consume. Uh, which I mean the Slave River, which is getting its source from the township. Now, they were made to wash themselves in the non consume but not in River Emisa, because during the rainy season, when the river floods, you can't even cross from this side, because the current is so much stronger that if you try crossing, then the river will just carry you away. So they used the stagnant one, which is the non consume to wash our brothers and sisters. So after washing you, you go through your first option, and you go to your first garden before being taken to the Cape Coast landing. But in here, we realize that our brothers and sisters in the diaspora, whenever we have the opportunity to come back home, it is not just another day to see another country or just another day to see, to meet another people. It is spiritually connected for us to come back to our roots. So when they come in here, they go through so, so many rituals in order to bridge the gap and conscientize ourselves in making ourselves better. So, as I said earlier, you realize most of them have their shoes off because they believe that this place is a sacred grounds and it's needed to be treated as such. Because when you look across the river, you see these uh, bamboos scattered all over there. It is called the bamboo cemetery. Most of our ancestors who fought their way and killed were buried right there. People say they were rebellious, but for me, I call them freedom fighters because they fight for what they stood for. With the non Council also, it also has a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of things to do for us because it is spiritually strong. Uh, we fortify ourselves, we clean ourselves, we baptize, and we also go through the first bath of return. Uh, with the first bath of return, it's just a concept that uh, Ghana Tourism Development Company has adopted in order to uh, bring back our brothers and sisters in the diaspora, bridging the gap and making ourselves better. So in here, when you do come in here, you go through the first lot of ritual, rituals, which entails going to the river to say thank you to your ancestors, uh, doing the three-in-one rituals. With the three-in-one rituals is where you fetch some of the water, you wash your eye, and you pray that may our ancestors make us see whatever we wanted to see. Also, in our ears, so that whenever they speak, we should always listen and act accordingly. But after listening and seeing, you have to bring it out. So we fetch some on our lips, and we tell them that they should open our mouth, so that when we speak, we should speak wisdom, so that people everywhere will be running to us because they know we're going to say something better. When we're done with that, we go through the next one, uh, which is uh, the saying of wishes. Because we believe that our ancestors have missed us all. Today,